Terence Crawford takes out Kel Brook in four rounds. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Remstar Says So. So let's get into this one guys, Remstar Says So is back, it's been about two and a half, maybe three months, I think the last time I made a video is when Dillian White got sparked out by Povekin, man I've been slacking, but I'm glad to be able to sort of make a video for you guys, and I wonder if anybody still watches this channel, if anybody still subbed or whatever, I'm not too sure, but yeah, let's go with this one, Crawford, Brook, Kelbrook went over to America, to face um, Terence Crawford for the WBO welterweight championship title. It's mad because I was actually speaking to one of my boys yesterday um, about this fight and I was just like, I'm expecting Brooke to run, I'm expecting Crawford to run through Brooke in six rounds or less. And he was just like, ah, you need to go make a prediction video. And I was just like, I don't really do this YouTube shit anymore. And he was just like, bro, you need to get back on there, start making content so on and so forth. Anyway, I was a little bit busy watching football and doing other stuff that doesn't relate to making boxing videos on YouTube. And I completely forgot about it. Anyway, tried to watch the fight last night, set an alarm for about 2.30 in the morning. The alarm went off and then I was just like, nah, I've done this. So I literally found the video this morning when I woke up on YouTube, downloaded it because, you know, these videos always get taken off. And I've just watched it now, so I'm ready to sort of do my analysis. The fight went exactly like I said it would, or how I thought it would. Crawford managed to take out Brook in less than six rounds. Let's look at the actual beginning of the fight for those of you who's watched it or those of you who haven't. Crawford is a switch hitter. He started in an orthodox stance um, and he tried to match Kell Brook orthodox for orthodox. Now, when you look at the two fighters, Kell Brook is taller, he's bigger, he's more muscular, he's the more sort of... Um, a physical fighter if you want to call it that but we all know the sort of issues that Kelbrook has had over the last sort of three or four years going up to 160 to fight Golovkin getting his orbital socket broken coming back down to fight um, Spence and getting his other orbital socket broken so Kelbrook is what some people would call Ferrari no engine he always looks a million pounds on the scales, but I just feel like his body just can't do this boxing anymore. I'm not too sure what the purses were for the fight, so I'm hoping that Brooke was paid something decent, and also he managed to cut out the middleman and fucked off Eddie Hearn, so even if he only got like, I don't know, a million and a half, two million, whatever it might be, plus whatever UK money he got, hopefully he'll walk away with a decent bit of change and, you know, Surely he, this should be it now. This should be the curtain call. Unless he's going to do the American fight and have one final payday. And then they both just piss off into the sunset. But looking at this fight, like, it was an interesting one. The first round, people are going to call me crazy. But I actually gave that one to Kilbrook. I felt like Kilbrook was sort of leading with a nice tasty jab. Going forwards. Um, you know, trying to assert his dominance. Trying to show Crawford that, you know... He's not just there for the payday. And I think that he hit him with a few nice, clean, straight down the middle jabs. And I think he landed a couple right hands as well. Uh, just sort of showing Crawford, like, yeah, I'm here. This isn't just going to be some tick over fight or anything like that. The second round now, and I actually felt like Crawford, I actually felt like Brooke was still in control up until about a minute and a half in where... Crawford decided he was going to do some kind of wrestling move. It looked like he went for like a sort of belly-to-belly -belly suplex when they tied up and um, sort of dropped Kell Brook with it. And um, I think he got like a warning from the referee. I'm not too sure what the hell was going on. I thought I was watching SmackDown <laughs> instead of boxing. It was a crazy one. Um, and then from there, the sort of tide just went. I think that sort of belly-to-belly -belly suplex thing that Crawford did I think it kind of took some of the wind out of it. Going into the third round now, this is where Crawford decided that he really wanted to put move to Kell Brook. He switched it up. He went to um, Southpaw. And this is where he really started giving Kell Brook all sorts of trouble. Hitting him with a double and a triple jab. Getting in a couple of nice little tasty right hooks here and there. 
Kelbrook really didn't know what the hell was going on. Um, I think the best way for an orthodox fighter to fight a southpaw fighter, your left hand needs to be above their right hand at all times and just go over it for the jab. And I just don't think Kelbrook knew what to do. Um, it was kind of similar to when he was fighting Errol Spence and Spence took over and he just looked like he was in no man's land. Crawford was really roughing him up in the third round. In the fourth round now, um, Crawford was doing a bit more of the same and I think Kelbrook realised he was in danger. So he decided to just throw um, you know, gasoline on the fire and he went in to sort of trade with him. Crawford let go of like a nice little combination I think it was like a one, two, three, or maybe it was a one, two, three, four. Um, and Kel Brook sort of staggered and hit the deck. He got up very straight away, and the referee's counting, but he's not moving forwards. The referee said, I'll give you another chance, <laughs> which when the referee says that, you know that the end is pretty much near. Um, then the referee decided to let Kel Brook fight on, and within about 10 seconds, it was over. Um, Crawford, like the shock he is, he smelt that blood in the water. He pounced and he sort of just started unloading. Kelbrook had nothing for him. He was just trying to block punches, but he wasn't returning anything back. And sooner or rather than later, the referee just pushed Crawford off and waved it off. Um, that's a good fight for Crawford when I think about it. When I actually think about it, Kelbrook is probably the best name on Terence Crawford's record. As much as it might sound weird because everybody knows that Kell Brook was finished, I don't think Crawford's fought anybody better than Kell Brook. Definitely not at 147. I mean, Crawford's fought, what, Jeff Horn? Um, he's fought... I don't even know who he's fought. He's fought that guy called Faggot Boots or whatever his name was. He hasn't really fought anybody. And I think the biggest issue with Crawford is because he stayed at top rank and all the good 147 fighters are over at PBC. Yeah, I've just pulled up his record. So he's fought Kilbrook now. He fought Egliadis Cavalicus that they call Faggot Boots. They, he, beat, he beat Amir Khan. He beat Jose Benavides. That was a mandatory. And he beat Jeff Horn, who some people say shouldn't have beaten Pacquiao in the first place. So what now for Crawford? I mean, it sounds like Crawford's got about a year left on his deal at top rank, so we can expect Crawford to fight maybe one or two other sort of takeover fights that don't mean anything. The problem is, like, what is he really going to do? I mean, I know Sean Porter is really trying to position himself for that WBO mandatory, but we all know that um, Bob Arum and Al Heyman don't really like working together unless they absolutely have to. And I just don't see that fight happening. I'm sure there's going to be some other guys that Eddie Hearn's got laying around that Crawford can just tick off his resume. But the problem is Crawford's not getting any younger. He is old as fuck. And, um, you know, he's 33 years old now. What is he really doing? He needs to leave top rank. If he's got a year left on his contract, he might do well to buy himself out and go over to PBC where you've got your Pacquiao's, you've got your Spences, your Brooks, your Garcia, all that sort of thing. I mean, maybe you might see Terence Crawford versus Mikey Garcia. That might happen, but, you know, he's sort of wasting his time. Anyway, guys, what did you think of the fight? Like, and what do you think? What's next for Kill Brook? Do you think he should retire? Do you think he should go for the Khan fight and then retire? Do you think that he's still got anything to prove? I mean, clearly, he just... I think he's done now. I mean, he's killing himself to get to 147. He looked like he was in amazing shape. But also, maybe what he does is he spends 12 weeks losing weight and probably not that much time working on his boxing. But the thing is, I think he's too small for 154. And Crawford, do you think he should stay with top rank, re-sign, go over to PBC... Maybe sign if Eddie Hearn, become a free agent. I'm not sure. Anyway, guys, leave a comment. Hit like, hit subscribe, share this video. That's the end of the show because Remstar says so.